All right, hello everyone. Good Sunday afternoon. Hello, Lucas Gaming, Leon, that one meme, Pie Hunter Jr., Eno Lane. Is it Lane or Eno? And it. I gotta be careful when I'm saying your name. Tygo Bovendorp. <laughs> what? What kind of a name is that? That's awesome. Soulfire, Shadow. Killer X32, Sam Tynert, Tynert. Good Sunday afternoon. I'm hoping, uh, hoping everyone's doing good today. We're continuing with the arcade, arcade game series of builds. I'm gonna be building a new arcade game today. It's, uh, it's like a classic. Oh, hi, Kerr. It's a classic. This is like an actual game now. The other two games that I built, well, I suppose the the first the first Dino Jump was an actual arcade game too. I might have to go over there and delete the old one. Seems my FPS is taking a hit just from having two arcade games. Yeah, that was definitely it. All right. So the first arcade game, if you haven't seen it, I, the stream VOD should be up on my channel. You can check out the builds for both of these. But we'll take a quick look and see how they work, and then we'll move on to the third game today, which is sort of going to be like a mixture in between the two. So yeah, this is the first game. Uh, you just you start the game, and then you... Oh my god. And then you jump to avoid the obstacles. This is based on the old, uh, like the Chrome, the Chrome game when you don't have internet. And I, I do not have a very high score on this. So we'll just delete this. Or maybe we'll keep it because I might need this. Uh, this game, however, this is the last one that I built. And as you can see, I got a, a new high score of 729. That's like the level of demigods. But I'm still working up to my Ultra Instinct power. And this, uh, you just avoid the, the, the falling raindrops. And it does get uh, harder as time passes. Like right now it's pretty easy. I still don't know how I got 729, that's like a lot. Still, still pretty easy. Still way too easy. Oh, okay, it's getting there. It, it's, oh, okay, all right, all right. All right, all of a sudden the game's just like hard mode. And I failed. Not even 100 points. But both of these are on the workshop if you want to try them out for yourself. And I have the stream VODs on my channel if you want to see how they were built. But today we're going to be building a game. Uh, it's based, uh, I'm probably not going to build the game exactly like this. The one that exists, uh, but it's called SF Cave. It's a little game where you control a worm that just goes up and down. It's basically the Flappy Bird before Flappy Bird. Uh, and that's... we'll build Flappy Bird next time. That's actually a lot more like this game. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna do... Well, well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. So the game SF Cave is just, um... How did you get 700? Oh. I mean, I could try. I could try one more time. 
So the strategy that I used to get 700 was a super cheap strategy. You just wait in the side here. Because it's a lot easier to wait. You know, you can wait in the middle and only move... Oh my god. Only move one space to the left or right if a, if a block's falling down on you. But that's hard to see. Because you can't actually see the columns very clearly. So if you wait on the side here... Uh, it's a lot easier to see if there's a, a drop coming down the side of the screen, just like this. You just move out of the way for those single drops that fall. And the oh, the only hard part about this strategy then is it just it just showed uh, an example, but it's like where there's a stream of drops that sort of staircase out to the middle. It forces you to dodge continuously in the right direction, bringing you closer to the middle. So basically, the longer you can stay on the side, the higher score you can get. Oh, oh, the, oh my god. <laughs> that was a perfect example of how the game, how this strategy can get harder. Like, there is a chance that it'll bring you all the way to the other side of the screen. I just gotta focus for a little bit. One slip up, one blink at the wrong time, and then it's all over. I can't even look at chat while I'm doing this. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised I dodged that one. Oh no! Oh no! Why'd I get out of my seat? Ah! Oh, I accidentally hit my spacebar with my wrist. Stupid spacebar gets you out of your seat. Whatever. Whatever. So that was a high score of 535. If I had not hit the spacebar, I probably would have beaten my old high score. Anyway, so today's arcade game. Uh, I don't think we're gonna need this one. Probably won't need it, so let's just take it apart. Or delete it, I mean. We might take this one apart, though. Alright. So let's get started with the screen, as I'm so used to the uh, challenge builder now with the extended, like, 64 blocks. I kind of miss that. I want that for creative mode. Hello, c class? Clace? Class? Mr. Muller. Dino Jumper is best. What mods? Oh, it's just uh, the mod pack. For this one, you need the challenge. The, the workshop listing shows the mods that you need. But for this one, I think it's just the challenge pack and... Or, sorry, challenge parts. And the mod pack, of course. Yeah, I don't think it's anything else. Anyway, let's get, um... Oh, why did I start building... Why did I start building the middle? I need a bunch of the... Uh, what, what did I call it? I will need that, maybe. But no, I need, um... Horizontal row. There we go. I need a bunch of those. And I'm probably going to make a very tall screen. So this is just a like a, a row of color blocks all connected. Uh, just going in the same direction. So uh, like the other games before, this is going to be a very analog game where... Like the screen is just... It's mostly displaying what came on the pixels before it. There's no like... Uh, Future arcade games are going to have a screen behind the screen to actually calculate positions and stuff for... Like, so you can display a pixel traveling both directions on the screen. Uh, this, These games just sort of, like, force... You know, whatever shows up on the first pixel is going to be forced to from right to left. Uh, we're going to be doing that for this game as well. How many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
Uh, this is two, four, six, eight, ten. We might, uh, we might do a little bit more than that. So eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. And he might also make it twice as long, too. We'll see how that goes. But first, let's just get started with um, welding all this together. Um, you know what? Let's um, let's start on the metal. And it is going to go from right to left, uh, just like the other games. So, if you don't know... If you don't know what uh, SF Cave is, uh, it should be like a free game for your smartphones. Super old. Although, like, people remake it for modern devices and stuff. Uh, but it's just like a simple worm game. You control the vertical position of your worm. Okay, can I get my whale tool on the same hot bar? Just got to make sure that these are all going in the same direction, which they should be. But I just want to double check so I don't mess up. Anyway, SF Cave. It's a game where with like a randomly generated cave, like a roof and a ceiling. This is why I said it's like the Flappy Bird before Flappy Bird because there's it's just like uh, I don't know how. Oh, wait, what's this like weird lines that I see? I don't know if you guys can see it on stream, but like every fourth block has a weird vertical line. Scrap mechanic is very weird sometimes. That shouldn't be a problem, though. Anyway, SF Cave just has, like, a, a, a cave. It starts out pretty big, so you have lots of vertical room to go up and down. And then eventually it gets, uh, like, a, a thinner and thinner cave. And the actual SF Cave game is... Um, like, it has obstacles in the middle of the cave. Just, like, floating blocks to avoid. I'm not sure if my game's gonna have that. This is actually, like, a very small screen, relatively speaking. This is just 16 pixels tall. So I'm not sure, like... You know, I only have the option of making a cave that's 14 pixels tall maximum. To probably the absolute hardest, which would be 3. And then, it, <clears throat> and then it uh, depends on like the skill of the player how far they get. So yeah, I don't think I'm gonna put any obstacles in the middle of the cave. Okay, but I want this game to have a screen that's like, oh, jeez, that lagged a little bit. I think having this many color blocks is really killing Scrap Mechanic a little bit. Ah, we should be fine. Oh my god, my FPS is just really taking a hit. Yeah, we're not we're not really at 60. That's kind of weird. Maybe this screen is a little bit too big. 
we'll fix that later though. And by later, I mean right now. Okay, there we go. We're back at uh, at 60-ish. Alright, now we just gotta connect this gap in the middle. And we've got our screen pretty much good to go. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start creating... Last game I started with like the player controls and uh... Hmm... Maybe I'll do that this time. No, no, I'm going to start with the... with the back. We're going to start with the... Uh, like the cave generation. My FPS is seriously not liking this screen. So I don't think I'm going to need the dino jump after all. Or if I, you know, if I, it's an absolute necessity, then I'll bring it back out. But we're just going to delete that so that I have my frames with me again. All right. So this is going to be the thing that actually generates, um, hold on, yeah, wait, is it? I actually need two of these. I think I already messed up my design. You know what, it's fine, it's fine, I'll just, uh, I'll just shove it in here. I didn't I, like I wanted that to be one space apart from the from the screen to help with connections, which oh my gosh, I forgot to actually shrink my connection dots again. Another logic build that I forgot to do that with. So the equal sign is gonna, or like the equals column, that's gonna be the thing that checks where to display the the cave top and bottom. Uh, then we just need a column of negatives to convert that signal to, you know, white pixels. Oh my gosh, what is my mouse doing? Then we hook that up straight to the screen. And then that will send the pixels down screen. So if I change the position of the cave top and bottom, for example, it'll actually animate uh, as it travels down the screen. You'll see, you'll see. So, like, you can picture it like the Dino Jump game, uh, but instead of sending, like, a a stick of, you know, a, a fixed height, uh, I'll just send, like, sticks one after another, 
and they'll just be like different heights either going up or going down we'll get there so let's start with something that uh, first things first I think I just need well whatever I, I was thinking about like just making the screen black but that'll happen eventually I don't need to worry about that because it's gonna happen anyway okay so stick generation we're gonna need a counter block this is gonna be this is gonna hold the size of we're also gonna put a number underneath it Uh, but this counter block is going to represent the the value of the, the the gap in width, I guess. No, wait, is it? Hold on. We're going to stick a memory panel. Okay, 14 is going to be the maximum size. There we go. Now, with that in the memory panel, we're going to take... Uh, we're going to do 14 minus this value, which will start at 0. There we go. Now that's actually the, the, the cave size. So then as the, the game progresses, we'll increase this amount. And uh, it's white to reset, right? Yes. Okay. So then we'll just, like as the game uh, progresses, let's put a display on this so that we can see the cave size. So it'll start at 14 wide, and then go to 13, 12, 11, and so on. Hmm. I didn't think this through very much. Nope, nope, I did not. What mods are you using for this build? Probably just the mod pack. Yeah, I have loaded in the mod pack beta, uh, the challenge parts, and the buttons and switches pack just because I like to use this button for the last arcade game, but eh. I don't know, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to limit it to just the mod pack, but if there's like another if I wanna use some of these buttons for something else, I probably will. Just cause it makes it makes the arcade game look better. Okay. So now I gotta think of how I'm gonna use this, this value. I need a value for the top and bottom. Like the easy way to do it is just split the screen in half, which is eight pixels and eight pixels. Uh, but then that'll basically mean That'll basically mean that the game, like, say say we're at the smallest cave size, which is going to be like three pixels, which by the way, I should probably limit that, right? Let's limit that right now. Max. And then the max size is going to be... Oh wait, you need to be uh, painted black. 
and you don't matter anymore. Okay. Um, hold on. No, 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 no. You need to be Min. There we go. Okay, so let's set you to... I don't know what I'm setting you to. Oh, wait, 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 yeah. Okay, let's set you to 14. So that I can actually see. There we go. That's going to be the minimum size total. So now if I reset this. Okay, it's going to be 14. And then I can increase this as much as I want. And then it'll never actually go lower than 3. So that's what I want. It's get uh, fixed. I fixed the range of the total cave size. So now what I uh, what was I explaining earlier? Oh yeah, let's say the cave size is three. So you just have three pixels, like the absolute hardest game mode. Um, if I did it the other way, like the, the way the easy way, I should say, where I just split the, the top half and the bottom half eight pixels and eight pixels, uh, then the cave would just stay in the middle, and it's not a very hard game to play. Uh, so I actually want the range of 3 pixels to actually be able to move the full range of 14 pixels up and down. Or 16 pixels. Yeah. So this is just the open range, I guess. Uh, so then, now what I actually need is... I guess we'll just, we'll have a vertical offset. And for that, we'll probably just do it down here. Okay, so this value, which is probably gonna be um, like moved up or down Hmm. Do I want it to be moved up or down like every single tick? That's just gonna... That's gonna do kind of a weird cave shape, I think. We'll start off with this and then we'll adjust it later if I, I don't like it. But anyway. So this value is gonna be how much... How big the bottom cave wall is gonna be. Uh, and then we'll have to add, we're going to add this value onto that. Wait, how am I actually going to do this? Uh-oh, I did not think this through. Okay, so what I actually need is a value here which could be a memory panel but you know what whatever I'll just use a counter block okay so that's 16 now we're just gonna do 16 minus Uh, 16 minus um, our current cave size. So that this is the maximum allowed offset. And now I need to divide this by 2 to give the allowed range for the bottom of the cave. Which is going to result in like a decimal number at, at times. So basically I need to give priority to the top or the bottom. And I think I'm going to give it to the bottom. Yeah. I mean it's not a big deal if I go off the top by one pixel. We'll see. Durf has been streaming for 40.6 minutes. What are you talking? Wait, what? No. It's been 28 minutes. 
Anyway, what was I doing? This value divided by two. Okay. So now I also need to uh, put in a range, an allowed range for this. So if this, if this is, greater than, I, I need both. Okay, you'll be white, you'll be black. Uh, wait a second. I also need a zero. Alright. And then these are going to activate a logic gate. Just a plain old logic gate. I'm already kind of running out of space. So if zero is greater, we're just going to forcibly increase this counter. Yeah, doesn't matter how much, it'll just force its way. And if this is lower than, uh, no, if it's greater than the accepted range, which over here, we'll put a number, number display so that we can see what it is. I don't need this to be two digits. Or do I? Oh wait, this is half the accepted range. So why is it one? Okay, that is divided by two. I'm already messing up. That is 16. Oh, oh, that's not the accepted range. That's the, uh... Okay, that's the total size of the bottom of the cave. Okay. That's technically the size of the top and bottom cave wall. How much is a uh, derf dollar compared to a lame dollar? What? Okay, anyway, so then this is just Oh, I didn't connect this. Hold on. You got to be painted brown. There we go. Okay. Reset you. Okay, so I think this value right here This is the current um addition, I guess. We need to start this at 1. Maybe I need to just have you at 1 all the time.
So, can I just use a switch instead? Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Okay, okay, it's fine, and then it's not fine. Why does that happen? Oh, it's probably the the, uh, the tick delay. All right, hold on, hold on. Well, this is this is this is dumb. I think the issue can be fixed if I just used two logic gates like this. Because then the delay would be the same as the input. But then with the delay, it can technically go outside the range, which is kind of dumb. No, that's even worse. The, the problem is just even worse now. Okay. All right. New solution. Cuz this solution works fine. Wait, why does it go Why does it go 2 ticks? It's not supposed to go to 0. It's supposed to go back to 1. How is the logic gate doing two ticks when I'm only... When it's only one tick? Oh, come on, scrap mechanic. Why do you do this to me? Wait, has Durf ever shown his face? Nah. Nah, that's something for 100,000 subs. So if you want to see my face... Hit that sub button. Okay, this is actually bugging me though. Basically, this number is supposed to tell me how tall to make the bottom, and then we skip, uh, we skip this number of equal signs, and then do the same on top. Let's start with a number maybe less than 14, which is this. Um, okay, we'll start with 12. I'm pretty sure two. What? What? This is 14 minus the minimum here. Oh, oh, this is the thing that I have to change. Okay. Okay, so if that's 12... Um... Oh my god, I'm, I'm actually, like, having a big old brain fart.
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, we're giving ourselves two extra pixels to work with. We're going to write that. There we go. Okay, so now I want this range to stop at not zero. Four is a nice even number. We'll just leave it at that. Okay, so now we have two pixels to work with. Hooray. It's so weird how these... Like, I would like to use tick buttons on these, but then it's not going to repeat. Well, you know what? Let's do it. We'll just use tick buttons on them. Oh, wait. I don't have to. I don't have to because they already exist. Okay. So now the only issue that I can possibly foresee with this is I can't adjust the height of the cave bottom and top uh, like once per tick. Because it's there's a, a possibility that it'll go out of the range if I just click this fast enough. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a problem. Okay, you know what? I might have to spawn in the the other arcade game because there was a. Well, no, I can't do that here. The last arcade game, I had this same issue with character position where it had to be less than or greater than. And the like the fix for that was just do less than or equal to. I don't know. I don't know. I just I'll just do this and then not move the top and bottom once per tick. Anyway, let's get started with actually creating this cave. So, Uh, do I even need this equals thing? I probably don't. Okay, so let's say we have, we're farther into the game and we can create a cave bottom up to five. Yeah, that works fine. Okay, so now we need to do, uh, wait, this is what we can create. Oh, no, no, okay, never mind, never mind. This is all, th this is what the, the hard limits are for. So we can just do anything random within this. Okay. Okay, so now I just need this number here plus or minus this number. Because I also need to create the the top of the cave, which is okay. So this this number here is going to be how many of the bottom gates are on. Then we're going to do this number, this number here for the actual cave size, and then we're going to do the remaining pixels are just going to be on. Which there there might be a way to just do that like super easy. Just by like checking if it's greater than and then you know it'll be it'll just be on for the rest of them let's try it that uh that way okay so then we actually need all of these we'll leave the equals i think but we need another column 
I think I built this too close. What, what did I just delete? Why is my scrap mechanic doing very weird things? Okay, that's plenty of room. All right. So we definitely need a column of math blocks. This is basically just going to check. Uh, we'll start at the bottom. I might actually need to re switch these around. Put the great. Well, well, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. I might. This might be wrong though. I, you know, I think I'm uh, in over my head with this. With this project, I don't know why. I'm having such trouble with this. Like there are definitely some other people. Okay. Like Lego Freak, he's he's really good at logic, and he makes me feel like an idiot a lot of the time. All right, stick in a bunch of counter blocks because we need to store the values of one to 16. And to do that, I mean, I already have some of these values stored in the memory panel and other, other spots, but uh, We'll just do it here for the sake of my sanity. It's actually easier to just program program the game. Okay, one, remove this, two, remove this, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15 and 16. Cool. Um, okay, so since this is actually a black value, we want these to be the next one. Okay. We'll worry about the other stuff later. Alright, so this is how this is gonna work. Like, we can create the bottom of the cave here like this, and it'll go up and down. Maybe once every two ticks. Okay, so I have that fine and dandy. Now I need to also skip this number. Wait, is it this number? No, I need to skip this number of gates before creating the top. 
which means I just need a value here, which is this plus this. All right. I already wired this wrong. This we definitely need. But I need to, uh, for, for the actual cave creation, I need none of this to be wired. I'm pretty sure. Well, no, that'll be fine. Aw, oh, what am I doing? Okay. Okay, this is the bottom of the cave. This... will easily be the, the top of the cave. But I need this to be... Black? No. No. White. Except I need... Two columns? Yeah, I can't, I can't do, I can't check both of these on the same column, so this is my, my fault. But basically, this is how, this is how that's gonna work. So, uh, as you can see, if I move, well, I can't move it up anymore. But here's the cave that we're supposed to like do our uh, fly our worm into, and if we move that down, the top cave should also be moving down. But I didn't wire it down any further. <laughs> okay. Ah. <sighs> All right, another column. I think we're gonna remove the equals. Oh, didn't even notice I put an extra gate down. Okay. So we need all these 1 to 16 values to go across for sure. It's actually, like, it's actually easier just to program a game than to do it in, uh, scrap mechanic but the advantage to doing it in scrap mechanic is you don't actually need to know a programming language all right and then this we'll just remove it that's an easy way to disconnect them all so now we can finish connecting this all the way to the top This one from top to bottom. Well, just the, the full column on the right. And then now I'll be able to show you the visual representation of the cave's top and bottom.
Okay. So our cave is six pixels tall. Um, and here I'll be able to move it up that much only. Should be able to move it up more than that. Why can't I move it up more than that? Let's, uh, let's reset this. So this is our full cave height. I can't move it higher than this. I can move it lower by one pixel. But I can't move it higher than that. Which makes sense because our cave is too big. I'm not sure if I did this correctly. This is a value. What is this value? Sixteen minus our current cave height. Okay, so sixteen minus twelve is four divided by two is two. So I can only move it too tall. That makes sense. So as our cave size increases, it's only letting me move it. Maybe I don't want to divide it by two. Okay, so that lets me reach the top of the cave just fine. And that's the bottom of the cave. Oh. Okay, that's a... See, that's the problem that I had earlier. I, I wanted to stop at one, not two, but as soon as I made it stop it, it does this weird thing. Maybe that was just my problem earlier. Let's try that again, though. We're going to do... We're gonna do a very <laughs> lazy solution here. There we go. Okay, so that lets us reach the bottom of the cave. And our cave can move up and down the whole range. Okay, so let's try this with a, a few different values here. We'll start at zero. Yeah, that's actually, that's perfect. Okay. Okay, so then I also need, we can get rid of this tick button. And we're gonna put another one right here. So we also need this one to reset this counter block. We're just gonna need that for uh, a game over. So whenever, whenever the game's over, we just reset back to the low cave position. All right, this is actually really good. Now I just need, uh, remember how I deleted that uh, equals? Well, I don't actually need an equals. I just need any old any old math block. I think actually regular logic gates would work too. Let's try it. Really, YouTube? Stop pausing my music. I have no idea why YouTube did that. Like, that was a recent update too. Um, they all need to be OR gates. So I only did the first three, but I want to make sure. 
Yeah, okay. All right. So logic gates will work. Fewer math blocks, probably the better, because it's all scripted objects and scrap mechanic is scrap mechanic and probably doesn't like it. So this is one of those cases where logic gates is actually better because it's like one of those, uh, what's the word, menial? Like pointless tasks. If I'm just transferring a one or a zero. Oh, oh, I was wondering why nothing up there was lit. It's because our cave is at the max height. I kind of don't like, I kind of don't like how I can't really see some of these connections that are just over top each other. And I just have to trust my ability to actually make the connection in my mouse working correctly. But I think I got it. So let's move our cave down. I at least got the, the top three. Um, so then how, oh, right here. Okay, yeah, they're all working just fine. Alright, let's connect you to the screen. My mouse! Why do you stop working? It's because I don't have a mouse pad. Okay, uh, I'm actually just going to hook up a couple of buttons here. Where? Where am I going to hook them up? Here and here, just for demonstration purposes. So that'll be down, and this will be up. And then we'll remove them later. Uh, and then also, another button. To show you what shrinking the cave looks like. Oh, right. We can't move it up anymore. Or down anymore, I mean. So this is how the cave is going to move. Up and down. And it'll also get harder over time. And this is... This is how it'll move. Yeah! And this is the hardest the game will get. So it's kind of like Flappy Bird. Derf, how much do you make money? <laughs> how, how much do you make money in a month? Um, if you're Okay, so YouTube, definitely not enough to pay rent, which is why I need more subs and stuff. Yeah. Uh, 2019, I'm gonna see how YouTube goes. If it doesn't go over, like, if I can't pay rent with YouTube by the end of 2019, I'm just gonna have to cut myself off and say, alright, this is not worth it. I'm gonna do something else. But, you know, I really enjoy YouTube, so it's what I would like to do. Um, but I also do have Patreon supporters that really help out. Uh, you know, I really gotta, I, I gotta update my Patreon page. Because, like, I want to give, you know, a sneak peek. I used to have, like, a mod tester tier where I would actually give people mods to test before they made it to the mod pack. But then I stopped doing that because it was just too much work for me. But I want to bring that back. Yeah. 
we'll see. But anyway, the the, the Patreon supporters um, definitely help out because like when YouTube doesn't pay the bills, and you know even that put together still doesn't pay the bills. Uh, so I also do uh, stream on Twitch, which is a little bit. It's nowhere near nowhere near enough to also help pay the bills. So then aside from all of that, uh, I have to, you know, do a quote unquote real job, which is terrible because I, I, I'm, a, I'm a freelance web developer. So I make I make websites and uh, and uh, web apps. Some I, I've made like tools and database stuff, uh, but some people also request like help with uh, their games and stuff. So they provide the art assets, and then I. Uh... Oh, Lego Freak! Yeah, you've been giving four twenty a month since July. So what? What? That was that's not last year, is it? Like that was like a two years ago. You've been a long-term supporter. You know, it's not... Well, yeah, it's totally not much. See, that's the that's the beauty of Patreon. Like, even if it's $1, it's not much... $1 a month, that's $12 a year. Like, it's totally not much at all for you. But if there's a bunch of you, it can actually make or break my career on YouTube. So it's actually, like, an amazing website. Alright, so if I reset that and I'm out of range... No, no, I, I just need to reset everything to be in the current range again. Okay. Maybe, maybe I'll set this to two, actually. Yeah, so now it's staying... Okay, so now I'm not gonna go... I'm never gonna go... Lower than this. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. I think it's good to always have one pixel at the bottom. But then why am I doing all this calculations for that row of pixels if it's gonna be on all the time anyway? Ugh. Yeah, Jacob, you're legendary. I definitely want to update my Patreon page, though. Uh, like, actually give you guys some rewards. Because that, like, you know, I, I can't, I can't... Mostly because I'm not capable of properly expressing my gratitude. So, I have to, I, I feel compelled to do something. Yeah. But then, like, I also understand it's, like, the point of your support is to help me succeed and not to get some reward. So, I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I gotta... Whatever, man. I, I'm conflicted. <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to do good. YouTube's not working out. We'll see how it goes, though. Back to this, though. So, I, I finally got the cave generation working. Now I just need an on-off state for the game itself. Uh, Alright, so if the game is on, we'll just do the, the on-off stuff in the middle here. And I think for that... Memory bit? Okay, so... Uh, do I actually want a memory bit, though? Because, like, I, I need... When the game turns off is when, when you collide. Alright, so then there's going to be... There's going to be a collision detector similar to the uh, dino jump. I wish I could start YouTubing. Uh, I mean, when I started YouTube, I was just using, like, Windows Movie Maker. The thing is, though, YouTube gaming is a nightmare. <laughs> it really, like, it's probably one of the most difficult aspects of YouTube to get into. There are some ideas that are, like, kind of easy to get into. 
YouTube gaming is probably one of the hardest because it's just like oversaturated. Like, why do you watch a YouTube gamer? It's either because they have, it's either because they're hilarious people of which I'm not, at least I don't think so. But like, you know, either they're freaking comedians or they have um, like funding and a team behind them. Like, they're, they, like they have an editing team so that they can just focus on producing content without having to worry about editing. Or they have like animators to help. Like Game Grumps is a crazy good production. Even though some people don't think so, but I find it hilarious. And that like it's just it's kind of like a commentary channel of their hilarity, but they're also playing games as they're commentating. Anyway, let's actually focus on this. So, the collision is going to be what turns off the game. So while this is on, I need this to be randomly going up and down. Every couple of ticks. Oh wait, that's the that's the wrong. Or is it the wrong? I don't know. It's not the right. Okay, so what I'm doing here is uh, I, you know what? Let's actually... We'll just use these values, because they are 1 to 16. And I'm not going to do 16 ticks. Or am I? No, I'm not going to do that. So whatever this is, if it is greater than... Or equal to... Uh, we'll try 4 ticks. Alright, so when this is on, it'll be counting up this value. And when it's greater than or equal to, we're going to do a white tick button to reset it. And now this is just going to... Uh, every time this tick button happens... We're going to, I guess, randomly go up or down. I guess I need, I need something that basically, I guess I need another one of these switches. Right here. And then for this, this is going to determine the direction that the cave is moving in, whether it's going to be up or down. But how does this flip randomly? Ah. Ah. Okay, so it's going to be another setup like this. Except it's going to be, instead of a fixed value, we're going to have... A random value random and that's going to be between uh, okay so if, if the cave changes direction or no, no, this just goes up or down. So if this goes, if the cave movement goes one pixel up or down every four ticks, then four times, um, I guess the minimum is what I need. Fuck. 
five? Uh, 10, 14, right? Five times 14? That's just 70. So a random value between one and 70. What am I doing? What am I doing again? I already forgot what I'm doing. Oh, this is how, how long it'll take be, uh, if I'm switching up or down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 70 ticks sounds reasonable. Seventy, seventy. I might also want that to lower as time goes on to increase difficulty, but we'll get to that, uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Okay. All right. We'll just store the values here for the random. Okay, random value between 1 and 70. Uh, and now, if that is... Uh, we need an actual counter. Which is going to be counting up from this. Alright, now I do the check. If it's greater than or equal to the random value. Alright, then I get a white tick button, I reset this, and generate a new random value. And that's uh, a continuous loop. Okay, and then that will flip the switch. Perfect! So now... Now I have up or down. Okay, and then this is also just going to be AND gate, AND gate. Here or here. And these are going to go, I guess, uh, I guess we'll just go down here and up here. Just like that. Alright, let's turn it on and see. Uh, let's reset everything first. Well, no, let's let's keep the full I forgot I got to uh, I need to reset this one first, I think. It doesn't really matter. But let's shrink the cave just to see how it works. All right, on. Great. Great. It's already doing things that are not good. What am I comparing? This is less than or equal to four. Do the white gate. Why is it trying to go down all the time? Oh, you know what the problem is? Okay, hold on. All right, reset everything. I think uh, I think the issue that I have is I just need these to be logic gates. Instead of tick buttons. Which should be fine. Although I might need a tick button for the actual switch. Let's check this one here too. Yeah, they should be fine as logic gates. That is not a logic gate.
Okay, because I think the issue is that a tick button doesn't generate a new random number or something? Or I don't know what's going on exactly. But I'm going to switch it and we'll figure it out. Okay, it's constantly going up. It's never switching. Never switching directions. Project 0 0.1 finished. Yeah, the, no, I know. This might actually take a couple streams. I, I don't know, I still have like another 40 minutes. And this is probably like the hardest part of this anyway. The collision detection's easy. It's exactly like the dino jump. Uh, oh, hey, even Lenny's here. He already made plays and works with a lot of people. Not, and not to offend you, but they are all a lot bigger than you or even Durf. Yeah, the other multiplayer Monday, guys. Oh my god. Like, I'm the only one under a hundred thousand subs and like significantly under <laughs> it's not why are they why did they why did they let me on multiplayer monday <laughs> uh i i don't understand i don't how how to youtube it's a mystery but no hopefully i'll learn a lot from them um and uh hopefully things will Cause like collaborating with people, it doesn't uh, it doesn't translate to subs on your channel. Like sure, it's kind of kind of an exposure thing, but the structure of multiplayer Monday is more like people usually tend to watch the multiplayer Monday from their favorite channel, unless the video like unless the particular multiplayer Monday has unique perspectives, and then people like to watch all of them. But um, well, even then, not everybody does. Funny thing is, though, uh, I have a, if you guys don't know, I have a second channel just dedicated to Scrap Mechanic Mods, where I do, like, I release the updates, I have tutorial videos and all that stuff. That channel is currently growing faster than this channel. Because the mod pack gets you the fame. No way. No way. The mod pack has, like, the same subs on the workshop. It has the same subs. Or close to the same subs as uh, that Scrapman has on YouTube. Like, there's no way it doesn't translate to YouTube subs at all. I'm sure, like, people know of the mod pack on Scrap Mechanic, but they don't really care who made it.
How fast is Pocket Toast growing? <laughs> Not at all. Five people know about it, and that's it. And I'm probably I, I'm probably gonna create another channel and create videos for that new channel before I make any videos for Pocket Toast. Yeah, it's just not something that I'm really going to get into. Okay. So something else I actually have to do then. I have to fix... I have to fix the direction. It just wants to go up, and only up. So I have to fix whatever's going on here, which is this. And... We do the check. Oh, oh, it's this. I didn't actually connect to that. Oh, I think that was the issue the whole time. All right, let's get rid of this, rid of that tick button and give it a try. Well, now it just wants to go down all the time. It is getting a new random number okay there we go there we go that's some good cave generation all right turn off the game um, all right, so then if this If both of these are on then this is what's going to actually reset Everything so this uh, this logic gate This will only turn on Yeah, there you go, and that resets the game perfect Okay now I need to add um, as time passes, we're going to do the high score stuff, score keeping, and uh, difficulty increasing. Which is not this. I don't need to worry about this down here anymore. It's just, it's just increase this over time. Which will probably be some high number greater than 70 so it'll, it'll just be like another thing like this not random so it'll be like a thing like this we just count score counter whoops score counter okay as long as you're on And we also need a reset button for you. Okay. And then I guess, you know, I'll also do the, the high score setup. How do I how did how did I do that? It's actually like up in there I thought it was lower and then I could just sneak a peek from the front
Wait, where is the high score? Here. What? I clearly <laughs> can't see a thing. I know it's a memory panel that stores the high score, but how how did I write to it? It's it's a tick button, right? But like Oh, oh, it's because this game Okay, this is uh, this game writes uh like it adds to the score for every raindrop that falls. Uh so I can't Okay, I can't actually use this high score system. Because this game, I want to just count the largest tick value. Or, yeah, the largest timer value. Okay. We'll do it. We'll do it that way, then. This, this way. That way or this way? What am I saying? I have no idea. Alright. Value straight into the... Memory panel, if... That value is less than this value, the, the current score value. That should write to the, to the high score. And we'll just get a... A debugging display on the inside just to make sure that it's writing and of course our master reset button which is a black input all right that seems to be writing And all of a sudden it's not writing. Or it's it's not there anymore. What's going on? Oh, did it write a score of zero? No, it shouldn't have. Oh, it did though because of the of some tick delay. It might seem silly to just do two two plus blocks, but that's kind of what I need to do. There you go. So that saved the high score. And then only when I pass the score does it write new high score. Okay, cool. All right. So this is the high score display. This is the current score display. I guess we'll put those outside right now. I haven't even looked at the outside of this since I built it. And then the last part is just some collision detection to trigger the game over. Um, let's raise this up a little bit. And then we'll put my feet seize on that. Okay. Oh yeah, and then I actually need to, uh, not the collision detection, there's actually more. I need to do the, um, uh, 
uh, like the actual character, which is a snake slash worm. Durf, you have a pink electric ukulele. What? <laughs> no, I don't. Anyway, let's do... Um... Not sure if that's going to be enough digits. Okay, so that'll be high score. With the, the master reset button. Right there. Can get rid of this. Alright, and then the actual score, we'll just do it, uh, right here, I guess. Not, you know, I have not planned any of this out. Is that the same number of digits? I think so. Okay. Uh, so now the character is probably going to be around here somewhere. We'll put... I guess the main control. Is it going to be a tick button? I don't know if it's going to be a tick button. I think it's just going to be a regular button. So the way that the game, the actual SF Cave game works, you just tap on the screen if you're on mobile or click your mouse if you're playing the traditional game. Okay, there we go. And then, you know, just when you click, um, you, you know, the, the snake accelerates upwards and when you're not clicking, it uh, accelerates downwards. So what I actually need to do then for the character position, uh, we're going to have to de uh, disconnect some of these pixels. We're going to disconnect these ones. Freaking mouse stops working uh, every now and then. I think it's just like, because I'm not using a mouse pad, there's dust in my laser. Alright, and I'm just going to paint this for my sanity. Ooh, can I actually have a green snake? Ooh. Ooh, I think I can. Let's do that. We're gonna have. We're just gonna store the number value for a green snake. Okay. So now, whatever I connect this to, that'll be where my snake is. Awesome. Awesome. I'll actually have. This is gonna be my first color game. C color screen, whatever. You know what I meant to say. 
Okay. So let's do the actual character position thing now. Um, we're gonna do a bunch, uh, a column of less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. It's gonna be one of them. I don't want it to be upside down though. So, character position will be, um, maybe I gotta do this the same way that I did the Don't Get Wet game, but the collision has to be the same as Dino Jump, which, like, comes from pixels up ahead and matches the tick delay, and then I also continue displaying it from behind. Or maybe I just don't need to worry about that. Let's start with just some simple, simple character position stuff first. Oops. I'm oops, I'm actually terrible at this game. Okay, they're all the same. All right. Um Yeah, I'm going to need some kind of limit limitation limiter. No, it it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter because the game's going to be over at some point. Oh. Oh. Oh, I'm also going to have to use the game on off state. All right. Well, this is going to be character position. And we're going to do uh, two logic gates. Oh, wait. No. Hold on. How am I going to do this? I want to accelerate. Can I? Let me try something first. I don't actually know if the counter blocks are capable of doing this. Yes, okay, they are capable of doing what I was hoping they are. All right. So then this is just going to be the rate of acceleration, and this is going to be the actual position. And this just has to be a very small number. Um, hold on. Hold on. Uh, 
Hold on. I want there to be as little delay as possible. Okay, but I might need to add another tick delay for the controls. So this is accelerating down unless you push the button, which it'll mean accelerating upwards. Uh, and like, I like this because this is exactly how the original game works. And that's the difficult part about the game is that uh, you don't, it's not like Flappy Bird where you just press it and there's instant, you're going up. Because that's kind of easy. Uh, so if you're going down too fast, you actually have to fight your momentum to avoid get, hitting the hitting the cave wall. But I only want this to work when this is on. So this needs to be X or and this needs to be and, which it already is. Okay. So then that's going to be... My controls. Okay, and then... This is the actual position of the character. But... But... I might want to have that... Let's do, um... Let's have this be the position of the character, and we're just going to do plus. We'll start relatively in the middle. Plus this amount. So this is the position of the character, but this is going to be reset. Reset when the game's over. Okay. Okay. Um, I might have to do some uncomfortable wiring because my values for 1 to 16 are all the way over there. Okay, then we wire this. Um, let's just paint this white. Shouldn't you be on? White is less than or equal to, like this, this value is like five or eight or something yeah it's eight so eight oh wait eight is not less than or equal to oh I'm also bad at understanding how any of this works okay hold on I need these to be equals, not, uh... But then I just need to make sure I round out the value. Well, shoot. Round. There we go. I'm sure it'll be fine. Okay, now... Now I can wire this all up. So now it will most definitely be just in one position.
It's a lot of wires. Too many wires. Uh, you can make an easy sequence of numbers with a line of addition blocks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I could do that too. I don't think it's any difference to the script running, though. But uh, definitely something to keep in mind for the future. But, like, the advantage... Well, it doesn't doesn't really have any advantage. Never mind. I was going to say the advantage of this is that I can pull those values and use them for other stuff, but... Could do that, too, with addition blocks. Alright. So there's the default position, which is just staying where it is because it's, uh... Because it is, you know, well, I, I'm speaking is hard. Hold on. Because the game's not on. That's what I'm trying to say. I really got to learn to do this from top to bottom. Okay, so the the column of equals is like the the, ca the, the character's actual position, uh, but the multiplication is going to be what lets me color the character. And then that's also what I connect to the screen. And then we can test what the character movement looks like while the game's running, and then I'll do the collision detection, and that should be pretty much the game. These arcade builds, man, they, uh... definitely use up some brain power. But I'm glad that I got some sleep so that I was able to do this today. Uh-oh. Okay. Next time I really just gotta remember uh, to shrink my connection dots so that I can see what I'm doing a lot better. No, no, no. I really shouldn't worry about the top and the bottom, but you know what? Whatever. Not, not my, not worried about it. Okay, let's uh, position ourselves. Let's make a, a just a, a seat, any old kind of seat right now. It doesn't really matter what kind of seat. Sure, we'll do this. Nope, we'll do it on top of here so I can see the screen. Okay, seat controls the button, and we also need to start the game. Okay. Start the game. Oh my god. <laughs> Where, where's my character? Is he coming back? Oh, oh, jeez. <laughs> Come back down. This might actually be way harder... Like, I, I, oh, jeez, it's coming, it's so fast. All right, all right, stop everything, stop. Stop everything.
Where is my character? If I reset... Oh, you're still counting up. Oh, it's... Okay, I, I need to reset both of these. Okay. So now we can properly start over. Okay, it's kind of working like I, I thought it would. It's uh, it's kind of hard though. It's kind of really hard. I think I'm going to increase the. Uh, I, I think I'm going to increase the upwards acceleration. Definitely, like, oh my god, this this is a, a hard game. If this is, it's kind of like not as responsive as I thought it was gonna be. But if I make it faster, it, it's just gonna be harder. Like this is easy enough because the cave is still pretty wide. Oh, that's something that I didn't add in. I didn't make the cave shrink over time. Okay, we still gotta do that. Yeah, but you gotta get like expert control over, like you gotta get a good feel for the accelerations if uh, if you have any hope of doing well in this game. All right, let's reset that. You could use zero G to help wire high places. Oh, is that, that's not for me, is it? Jeez, has there already been two hours? I can tell how long I'm streaming because YouTube decides to stop my music every hour. Hello, Endermite. It's weird how they stop at the snake. Oh yeah, yeah. We're gonna f we're gonna finish the um, the wall animations when we do the collision detection. It'll be the same as the. Uh, it'll be the same as the dino jump game the animation will continue for sure but let's get let's get the cave shrinking after a short time as well which is just another thing like this Need some really high value. Oh, it's not connected. Duh. We'll do maybe, um... Four hundred ticks is ten seconds, right? So... So that should be 30 seconds. Okay. Um. And then we also want to just have a counter count up when the game is on. Where is the on? Here it is. All right, and then we compare. Uh, compare this to this. 
And if it is on, we need a reset. So this, this counter will count up when the game's on and reset every 30 seconds. Now every 30 seconds, we're also going to shrink the cave. All right, let's see how that looks. You might need it to be longer than 30 seconds because this, this is kind of a hard game. But we'll, you know, play around, uh, play around with this for like a, a minute or so. Actually, trying to, uh, like, I'm, I'm, oh my god, I'm lightly tapping because I don't want to accelerate too quickly up or down. But I'm actually trying to not, you know, hit the sides of the cave, even though there's no collision detection. I don't have to worry about it. I just want to see how difficult this game gets. I might need to make the acceleration up and down faster. But that, like, kind of also makes it harder. I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to do some testing. Oops. Oops. That's definitely a fail. But the cave is shrinking, so that's uh, kind of a good thing. Oh my god. Definitely a fail. Yeah, look at the look at the size of the high scoreboard that I've made. There's no way anybody's gonna get that high. And I said that for the last game too, but this is like far beyond what's actually possible. Oh my god, that would be a fail. Alright, I think this is good. Good difficulty progression for the level. I kind of want to make make the acceleration bigger. Even more so. That's not bad. So if you tap like the perfect rhythm, you can definitely straighten it out. And if you hold it, you get like maximum acceleration. Which, I, you know, is either used to actually accelerate upwards or to slow you down if you're moving too fast. Oh my gosh. Definitely a fail. Alright. Well, I'm not very good at the game that I made. Okay. So then what do we actually need? We need the... That's pretty much the whole game, except we need the collision detection. Also, let's reset the high score. Because I'm, I'm probably not even going to get 4,000 or whatever. So, collision detection. First things first. Um, I think we need a display on this side. for the caves. We already have the snake. Hmm. Hmm. 
How do I do an OR value between white and green? I need to do, I, I might need to actually disconnect all these multiplication blocks. I don't want to move them like closer to the screen because that's going to be a pain in the butt to wire. Oh, well, sorry. I, what I mean to say is I don't want to I don't want to have to do this, which I'm going to be doing anyway, I guess. All right, disconnect, multiplication. And this is adding yet another tick to the display, which is kind of unfortunate. But it's still within like five ticks, so it's probably not too bad. Five ticks is like what, one fourth of a second? Just reconnect the screen through. What? I can't do that. Can I? Uh oh, can I actually do that? <laughs> Hold on. We'll do it with uh, a little sample. Yeah, I can't do that. It's not letting me do that. See, it's not letting me do that. Alright, so then what I was doing instead... Uh, I just need to take... Because the, no, the, the color blocks are just numbers. No, no, no. Oh. So what I'm going to do instead is we're going to take uh, these. And we're going to take the min value. Because uh, I'm pretty sure... Pretty sure the white... Like, white is full color. So it's like a 16 million value or something like that. So I want to take the minimum value between that... And the multiplication. So that's going to give priority... Priority display to the snake. But then I'll be able to... You know, whatever whatever this show whatever this column shows, it's gonna continue to show after it. I don't really understand how they combine the numbers. Um, it's kind of like a number block that just displays 
I suppose like it I it should it really should just by default add them together but it, it doesn't work that way because when you have multiple displays it tries to do like an RGB input instead of just a single number input I don't know it's something that we'll probably look into eventually got to get Brent on that GUI. The thing, okay, yeah, we're supposed to be working on Modpack Beta, but, like, it seems like everybody this month just doesn't want to work on mods. And I already have enough to do this month anyway. So even me, probably not. I might, uh, like, I already got uh, a new model done for something that's completely unrelated to the Modpack Beta. What did I just connect you to? Can you not? I just, I really wish my connection dots were smaller this time. I really gotta remember that for the next time I stream arcade game building. No, no, no. Okay, as long as there's no connection dots behind the current ones, I think this is okay. Now for the actual hard part, because there's going to be connection dots everywhere where I'm pointing. Uh, but I also need this, these connection dots here. Yes, because there's going to be, um, there's a tick delay just because I'm using the, uh, oh no, what did I connect? Okay, I think I got rid of it. I, it's really hard to tell because I can't see a darn thing with these ginormous voluptuous connection dots. I just gotta take my time and make sure I'm actually doing the connections I want to do. Dude, these blue lines! <laughs> Jeez. All right, and the last final bit of awkward connections. Are you serious? Are you serious right now? Oh, well, I, I understand. Okay, I understand that the minimum value between. Oh. Oh, this is wrong. No, they should be max, right? But then that's gonna give priority display to the cave walls, which isn't like a super big deal, but I would have liked it the other way around. All right. Cool. Yep. Yeah, fail. Fail.
All right, now let's give this game some collision detection. And that should pretty much do it. There's something weird going on. Do you see that? When the cave is actually high up, there's that this one column that's just not not doing stuff. That's probably just a, a bad wiring job. Or one of these is set to min. Which one was it? It's like the third... Okay, third from the bottom. Okay, I think I got it. Yeah. Alright, cool. Now we just need to add collision detection, and oh my god, this game is so hard. <laughs> it's actually so hard. I might just, um... Jeez. It's actually really hard. Let's see how it controls with, instead of... Instead of changing the, um... Instead of this, let's try... This instead. Oh, now it's actually, like, super slow. So if I painted these different colors, then... Um... I guess... I guess let's try one and negative one. We'll see how that works. But that's gonna be really fast. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Okay, so this is obviously too fast. But this is a lot more responsive and you have a lot more control, which might be a, a more fun game than the acceleration stuff. So let's do then The same sort of setup, but with no acceleration whatsoever. I think that feels a little bit better. You can hardly tell that it's even without acceleration. This actually looks a lot more like the game. And, you know, you'd probably be able to get a, a proper high score with this. You move up faster than you move down. I think this is perfect. Very nice. All right. So we're doing that instead. Uh, yeah, so we don't need this anymore. Okay. Now, what we need here is, um, what's connecting to this? Just the seat, right? If I disconnect the seat. Nothing else is connecting to it. Okay, perfect. 
So I just need um, this to be NAND. So only when it's not on. And I'm and I press something else. Which will be the big old on button. I guess uh guess a regular button will do. We'll paint it green, I guess. Uh, we can get rid of this. Okay. There we go. So now this button is only has the capability to turn on the game and doesn't have the ability to turn it off. Which is a problem for my ability to test the game. That's okay, because I can just come here and turn it off. Wait, why didn't I just do... Why didn't I just do the thing that I did... I could do this with an XOR gate. And then just hook that up straight to the button. And then this button straight up to this tick button. So if I press this... It'll... What? Okay, well clearly I have no idea what I'm doing. Turn you off. Tur Hold on. Turn you off. There we go. Uh, reset you. Okay. Yeah, that's how I had it before. All right. Well, clearly I don't know what I'm doing, but let's uh, let's move on to the collision detection. We just need to check if. Um, both... Do these, uh... Do these white color values turn on an AND gate? They don't even connect to an AND gate. How does that work? Okay, so I have to send them through a number block, which, uh, again, like, how, why doesn't... That doesn't really make sense. They should be able to output... Whatever. Whatever. I'm already, like, a half hour over. I think I'm only gonna go another half hour, and that's probably about it. But that seems like enough time to knock out collision detection. So, the display between this equals thing and the screen is... One, two, three ticks, which means three, so three, one, two, three. Yeah, so three, two, one, this column here, is that, wait, three, two, one, zero, this column here. Uh, this is where I need to grab the information from. I think I might need to grab it from actually earlier than that because I need to hold on if I put the plus here logic gate here like 
with the other game, my collision detection was like one tick off and I didn't even notice. White value plus green value equals crash value. What? I could check for an added value. I mean, that's sort of what I'm trying to do. Or... I don't know. I, I was thinking about having just like a column of AND gates here. So I check the equals. What did I just connect? Oh, I actually connected the right thing this time? Okay. Sometimes it's my mouse that, like, just stops working. Oh my god. Trying to see what I just connected. Okay. And then on this column, I just check... Um... Let's try this here. Like, worst case scenario is... That I'm one tick off and I just have to rewire to the next column over. So let's just stick down a column of... Addition blocks. Wire them up and go from there. Oh, I gotta love this awkward, awkward wiring. Like, I can't even see where the last uh, wire connects to other than like a single yellow pixel inside my connection dot. I don't even know if that shows up on, on stream. And I act like I don't enjoy this, but clearly I put myself through it every weekend. Okay. So now we just check. Oh, pfft. Oh my god. Uh, okay, there's no connection dots in in the way here. Just a bunch of connection lines. So this should be relatively easier to wire. Oh my gosh. I think that's I think that's the right wire. Okay. Okay, got them all. All right, now I just stick a single AND gate. And, uh, there we go. Wire all of these. Or no, wait, it's a single OR gate that I need. 
and this will just tick on if I collided. And then we use this to stop the game. Simple as that. And then we're done. We're actually done. 100% done, except for the aesthetic of the case. The game case. The arcade game case. Okay, so if any of those go on, this turns on, and that flicks the tick button. To turn the game off. Which resets the score. Where's the score? It's right here. It resets the score. Okay, cool. Let's also reset our high score. Okay, let's uh, let's test it out. Oh wait, there we go. Now we can turn the game on. Okay, so we're playing, we're playing, we're playing. Let's try to collide. Uh, okay, so it did. It stopped the game for like a second, I guess, but then it restarted immediately, which is not not what we want. Oh wait, it actually, what? Weird. Weird, okay, there's like a weird delay thing happening. And I don't know where it is. Like, it's either the delay from the collision... ...or the delay from all of these, like, resets. So I either have to match them perfectly, or... ...turn the game off. I think, I think an easy way to fix this. Is to just check. Uh, we're, we're just gonna put a new tick button. So the game doesn't accidentally turn back on. Wait, this is wrong. Okay, so only when the game's on and we collide, then the game... Then the game turns off. Hopefully that gets rid of all those... Uh, all the... <sighs> What's even happening right now? I think, um... Reset. 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 Game's not on. What? What's going on with my controls? And why isn't my character position resetting? What is actually happening? So I'm gonna start the game holding holding my button and it's not it's not going up anymore. Like what What's actually happening now? Literally all I did was add something to reset the game? What? Okay, let's disconnect that then.
I don't think I wired, like, cross-wired anything else. Why are you negative nine? I might also have to put some limitations on, uh, on the character position, but I don't want to add any more delays to it. Like, I shouldn't have to. Okay. What the heck? Okay, so that should have been a collision. Twice. Alright, so I probably just need to use a new, uh, a new column to check the collision. Yeah, that's like two ticks. Oh wait, no, the collision's just not working anymore because I disconnected it. Of course. Okay. So let's go stop our game. And that reset everything. Oh, you know what? We'll connect it to the tick button. Because this is the tick button that actually... That actually resets everything, I think. Or, wait. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that should be fine. That should be fine because we're checking if the game's on. I mean, it should be fine, but... Let's try to skim the top of the, uh, of the cave. Oh. Oh, okay. That's a that's sort of like a main menu bug. Oh. Where, wait, where does this connection line come from? It's from the game, okay. Then XOR. No, this should just be, um, hold on. I think that main menu bug is because of my lazy wiring job here. Okay, let's see if that bug still exists. It does, why, why do you exist? Like, I don't wanna have to add more delays to the, uh, to, to the player controls. Hey Chris, how's it going? Durf, after playing 100 hours straight of the game without pauses and dying, you get a a boss big chungus and you can't beat what? You talking about this game? <laughs> Jeez. I I think we're a long ways away before making an arcade game that uh, that has big chungus in it. I don't think a scrap mechanic can even support such an arcade game. Okay, so what I actually want then is the increase works because the, it's not going to turn on unless the game is on specifically. So let's do the same thing. This is NAND. This is perfect. So we'll change these to AND. I don't, I can do, I can go back to my lazy connections. We'll disconnect this. Okay. Uh, well, let's also reset this. It's still... Why? Why do you still do this to me? It's 
not the and, is it? It can't possibly be the, the positive. Like, it's going down, right? So... Oh, obviously it's going down because this is NAND. No, I want it to be... No, it should be, it should be with the game on. What am I thinking? I'm, like, running out of brain juice. So only when the game's on. This one shouldn't matter, actually. Only when the game's on. Why did I even put it at uh, X X War at first? Okay, there we go. Main menu. Bug is gone. Oh, cause I I that's right. That's why it's uh, X War. Shoot. Because I want it to go down on its own. Okay, well, I, I can't... I can't do X nor. I want it to be X or, but also only when it's on. And if it's off, I don't want it... Like, I'm... Ugh! I'm, I'm actually running out of brain juice. So then how do I do this... With a normal logic setup. I need... Without adding any extra delays. We're gonna check... If... The game and... The button are on. Then I do, um, we'll disconnect this. Then we'll do XNOR. And we can disconnect the button. Is that what I want? Only when the game is on. Hello, Golden Golden Hacks. Push the button and the game is on. This turns on. Which turns this on. So we actually want this to be NAND. But, no wait, XNOR. And then the game can also connect to this, I think. Or is it X or? I think that's right. Okay, so nothing happens when we're not playing, and then it goes down when we're playing. Perfect. Okay, so let's let's uh, lose the game. We didn't even beat a high score, so let's try to beat a high score then. And then we'll, I think we're finally done. And then we'll work on the casing. And like close it all up, publish it on the workshop, and call it a day. We got uh, like 15 minutes to spare too. So we can actually go for like a really big high score. But I'm gonna end it at a thousand. A thousand seventeen. Okay. Cool. I think that's actually it. Um, so then our seat is just connected to buttons one and two. Oh, I made a mistake. There we go. Okay. We don't need this anymore. So we can close up the case right here.
Um, hold on. I'll, I'll, I'll do that side last. Because I still need to put a roof on this. The same height? Yes, it is. Okay. And the roof. Oh, shoot. I didn't do the whole... Oh, wait, I did do the whole length? No, I didn't. Oh man, I, I did terribly. Come on, mouse. Alright, how about uh, any predictions on chat? What do you think my high score is going to be before, before I end the stream? Like, I'm going to try to do my absolute best and we'll see what my high score is. Like I got I got a thousand like easy. That was just me intentionally failing. But uh, what do you think my my high score will be if I actually try if I go if I go ultra instinct on this game? What do you guys think? Twenty seventy. Oh, that's that's way too easy. Keep in mind, like the the uh, the eighteen thousand two. Oh my gosh, that might be too much. I don't know. I actually don't know because um, the cave shrinks very slowly, so I don't actually know how difficult the game will be when it gets really difficult. Let's uh, put the seat on a stick right under here. What are the seats do we have? Sixty-nine. The eighteen thousand. Oh, three thousand. You think three? Really? If I'm trying my absolute hardest, you think it's only going to be three thousand? No, I guess let's just go with the saddle. Not a big deal. Just a little bit further back, I think. Yeah, there we go. We got the, the whole game in frame in first person. So we'll just do number one for the actual controls. Number two to turn it on off. Well, only on, actually. Alright. Then we'll do... Just sort of like a typical paint job. Nothing too special. Maybe I should paint the top and bottom white. So they sort of match the cave. Uh, 
That looks all right. It kind of like I kind of wish I put extra blocks on the top now. Yeah, our high score I think is going to be near twelve thousand. That that's pretty a uh, pretty good guess I think. We'll see. Very shortly. I also have enough room to probably write out SF Cave, the actual full name of the game. I don't even know what SF stands for. Snake finding cave something? I don't know. Some effing game. Some cave, whatever. Oh, oh, I ruined my white paint. Can I paint you? Ah, uh, it just paints the button. Okay. Alright, let's actually... Um, I probably need to put, like, a little leg on the chair as well. Okay. So let's take this off the lift. And give it a go. Hopefully I, uh, hopefully I don't pop out of my seat by mistake. Hello, all in Durf. What is it, screen? This is a game. It's an arcade game based on an old classic called SF Cave. Uh, well, let's just take a look and see how it is. So my high score is on the bottom left, and my current score is on the right beside it to the right. So right now I'm going to actually try, for the first time, try my best to get a high score. The rest was just testing. Let's go. So it's kind of like, um, I, as I said earlier, it's kind of like the Flappy Bird before Flappy Bird existed. Just gotta avoid hitting the walls. Uh, the original game, the original SF Cave, actually had obstacles, random obstacles in the middle of the cave that you had to avoid. To, but uh, I think... I think because of the low resolution of my arcade game, like it's only 16 pixels tall, I don't think it's gonna be an enjoyable experience to have obstacles in the middle of the cave. Because like, that would only give you a few pixels on the top and bottom to dodge. Then again, if I just added a pixel here and there... Oh, hold on a second. I saw another display glitch. It's near the top. I don't know how far in it is. But I gotta check to see what's going on there. I might have to end this game early just to fix that. It's actually quite distracting. Yeah, the, okay, so the snake, oh, oh, it's right next to the player position. It's not on the same column. It's just before it. All right, that should be an easy fix. Oh, I've gotten close quite a few times so far. No, no, YouTube music, why'd you stop now? I'm busy playing. I can't restart you now. Th there are bets of my high score in chat riding on this, and I need music. No, <laughs> jeez. It's not even that hard, though. Like, I I'm actually thinking about putting the occasional... 
pixel to dodge. Not sure. I don't know, I'll probably just release it as is, and then if you guys actually leave comments on it that you want it to be a harder arcade game. You know, I'm not even I'm not even sure if um because like I already made two arcade oh my gosh. Oh that was it. Oh my god, who guessed 666? <laughs> I mean, you're about ten times off, but you're like still probably the closest guess so far. And like I could have kept going too, but anyway. It's uh it's one of these There we go. That should be that. So yeah, let's get that music back on. Okay, so uh, what did I say it was? It was like every 1,200 ticks, I think, the, the cave shrinks. And so by default, this is like 12... The value is 12, but it's actually 13, uh, 13 tall. So then I just need to wait 12,000, 12,000 ticks before the game gets to its maximum difficulty. Which we were about halfway there. No, 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 talk with subscribers after finish this game. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, well, I know I've had, uh, I'm, I'm terrible for reading chat while I'm working on this stuff. Price is right rules, I win. <laughs> Very funny. Is it going faster too? Um, no. No, that was something else that I was debating too, if the change in direct so the cave moves up and down randomly uh but it's just random between a, a set value i think that's between 10 ticks and 70 ticks so like sorry that is actually just the change in direction so it'll constantly be moving up which is every four ticks every four ticks the pixel will move up so, I might be able to change that, uh, so that it's, at least gets... I didn't want to open up the back of it, whatever. It's right here, anyway. Uh, so it's this... Yeah, it's every four ticks. But if I made the game harder... Well, I'd have to change this little bit of logic. Uh, so that the the cave speed of going up and down isn't once one pixel every four ticks. It could be one pixel every three ticks. Uh, so then to do that, I could take... I could take the value of the score... And let's say we did modulus. Is that how that works? Modulus like a thousand or something? Or is... Hmm. Or I could divide it This. This is division remainder. I'm thinking about it, because, like, it seems like a good idea. And it should get harder. But then, like, the, if the cave also gets 
um, shorter, like thinner, then it's already being too hard is a bad idea. So it would be nice if it got faster and then slowed down every time the cave got thinner. Derf, what's the best creation you've done without mods? Probably my pod racer. How did you build so that moves? What? All the logic stuff? Right here? Sur surprisingly, all the logic, like 90% of the logic in this is just the screen that's wired from left to right. It's all fake. This entire section is fake. It's just repeating pixels of whatever was shown before. I think I'm just gonna leave it as is. And uh, yeah, I was actually, uh, I was talking about that before, before I forgot what I was talking about. But I already made like two arcade games and they're on the workshop and not a lot of people seem to play them or really enjoy them. So I'm thinking like, these are only worth the stream if you're into uh, watching me build these logical builds. But other than that, these games are kind of worthless. Because not a lot of people actually play them. Although, if you have, like, some amazing high scores... Well, I suppose you could just hack the high score display. I don't know. That's why we need challenge mode with mods. Because then I can just make challenges out of these... Um, out of these arcade games. So, like, you have to beat the game. You have to get a high score of 10,000 or so to actually win the challenge. Anyway, let's actually try to get a good high score this time. And, like, I've been streaming three hours, so this is probably going to be my last attempt. Also, I need to check my Discord. Okay. I haven't seen Moonbow use Discord a single time. Like, he has his own Discord, but I never see him on it. So I'm wondering how... how we're gonna get in touch with him for Multiplayer Monday. Anyway, let's try... let's try to get this high score. It's Logic Art. We'll see about that. All right. High score, let's go. And then this is this is going to be my last attempt. I'm going to save it, maybe do a little bit of a paint job on the outside, upload it to the workshop so you guys can try it out. And I'll maybe spend, you know, 5 minutes chatting with you guys. But I'm already like way over time. This is also very, uh, meta. I'm playing a game within a game. So what game am I playing right now? Is it Scrap Mechanic? But I do love, uh, how you can just, like, pursue an idea like, I'm gonna make SF Cave in Scrap Mechanic, and I pretty much did it. Well, to be fair, or I guess a, a, a correction is not, it's not in Scrap Mechanic. This is like entirely possible just because of the mod pack. Doing this, making SF Cave out of just logic gates would be a nightmare. And you wouldn't have a, a nice color display like this. Oh, oh, oh. No way, I didn't even beat my high score. 
Dang, dude. Moonbow plus Durf stream. Is Moonbow streaming right now? I don't think he is. Make Scrap Mechanic in Scrap Mechanic. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> no. No, if I'm going to spend the time to make Scrap Mechanic, I'm going to make it in Unity. And it'll have proper collision. And you'll actually be able to scale wedges. Like, actual scaling of wedges. Alright, let's see. Uh, I could probably fit... Big letters back here. I just kind of winged it with that letter. I, I have no idea if I'm going to be symmetrical or fit. Is that... Yeah, that's the same width. I could probably also make this bold. Um, um, symmetrical? I don't know. Sparkler Man says, Durf, why you no reply about my question, uh, question about channel review? Want to make SMN Unity? I'm good enough. What the heck are you even talking about, man? And if you keep asking me to check out your videos, I'm just never going to do it. Jeez. Calm down. Durf, Will, Script Minic, Script Micnic. <laughs> oh my god, be free to play. Um, so if I do end up making Script Micnic in Unity, like as a knockoff game, it's probably going to take a lot of work. It's probably going to be like uh, more than a year in development to actually be all the things that Scrap Mechanic Creative Mode is. Um, no, Cl uh, Chara, you don't have to, you don't have to be quiet. I was talking to, to Sparkler Man about constantly asking me. Anyway, uh, Scrap Mechnik, Mechnik, oh my god, my knockoff game. If I do, if I do, like, create it, I'll probably, probably charge for it. But it, it's probably gonna be like, cause like, all the time that I put into it, man, I can't not, you know what I mean? But at the same time, I'll probably just do, like, a $5 game or something. Like, I, I can't really say at this point. Because it's, it's non-existent. And I'm not even... <clears throat> I don't even, uh, you know, haven't started. I don't even know when I'm going to start. How, okay. Uh, we're gonna make these letters smaller. Uh... 
Uh, let's do... Um, I, I clearly don't know how to make letters. Yeah, I guess so. I could just put artwork in the back instead. That's probably what I should have done. I don't know. Let's put that. Let's put some artwork on the top. Maybe nobody's gonna look at the top anyway. But we'll just do something like, you know, ooh, I'm a snake. Look at me being a snake. Oh, that's <laughs> jeez. Durf, make the big chungus. What? Make the big chungus co sign on top of the machine. Game you made. What are you talking about, dude? And what's your obsession with big chungus? I have no idea. You know I made a big chungus, right? It's on the it's on the workshop. Can I put my lift down? There it is. Big chungus. Go find it on the workshop. Geez, sometimes I wonder, like, who who's watching my streams and why are you watching my streams? I'm pretty pleased with this cave artwork. Really, the only point of me doing this is just to see, um, like, what makes a better workshop image. Is it the back here or the top? And it's probably going to be the top. Which kind of makes me wish I made the artwork on the back because it's a bigger canvas. And I really messed up here. Okay, so we can move this up one pixel. Then we do this. And start moving it back down. Also, I should probably pay attention to what the bottom cave is actually doing. So this moves back up. up and then up then we go down 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 and up
Yeah, that's probably going to be the workshop image that I end up going with. Although the seat's also going to... I, I kind of wish I did the artwork in the back now. 100% my fault for not... Whatever. I mean, you know, I could change it, but, like, I'm already so far... Ah, uh, okay. No, you know what? Whatever. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. I'm not doing it. Let's save this. And put it on the workshop. Yeah, see... If I put it on the back, then I could actually have the, the workshop image. Ah! Uh, you know what? It's probably worth it. I'm doing it. <laughs> it's it's probably worth it. I'm gonna do it. Okay. What's the bottom of the cave? It's right here. Oh. Derf, you should give the S a small red forked tongue. That's an amazing idea. But it's too late now since I'm painting over it. Ah, oh, that's so good too. Or maybe if I did it like this instead. Ah, oh, that's so good. Why are you making me rethink my decisions? I was so sure of myself too. Now, now, uh, now I'm regretting painting over this. I mean, I could put the title on top, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to fit such a tall S, which like, it should be fine. I just shrink it down a little bit. Doesn't need to be that tall. I think that should be good enough. Okay, so minimum cave height. Be there. 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 Ooh, I don't know. That looks really close. I paint the first pixel? I don't think it matters. I mean, I could just paint the entire side. 
Oh, I don't know if I like that. Stupid corners. Okay. Yeah, good enough. Do that all round, maybe. Ah, uh, that's an idea. I'll just do kind of like a transition. I don't know, something like this. So it doesn't look absolutely terrible, but I don't want to mess up the, the front here. And then we can make it sort of match the back. Good enough. Build a giant Sonic. It, guys, no. <laughs> that That's not how it works. Not, like, I'm done streaming. Definitely done streaming at this point. Derf, do a snake on the sides. Um, make a snake that says SF Cave. No, I don't, th I think, I think I'm just done. I don't even remember what's on the top. Just white. I, yeah, I think that's it. Don't touch the sides or um I mean I guess like it's pretty self explanatory. Reset the high score. What does SF mean? I don't know. I mean, you can Google SF Cave. It's like an actual game. You could probably find it on your App Store or Android. Well, what what else could I call it? Like wor Wormy, Wormy Worm, wor Snake. I have no idea what else you would call it. Snake, it, you never escape though, snake. 
cave snake. I'm just pretty sure SF cave. Something that they can uh, Google themselves. Oh my god, I can't type. Okay. And we just need mod pack and buttons and switches just for the just for the one button that we're using. All right. Where's the icon? That's like exactly the icon that I want. And we share it on the workshop. And I'm gonna try um, maybe like an additional couple minutes for another high score, but... Then I really gotta go. Do I not have buttons and switches pack? Guess not. Okay, save and continue, and then we'll make it public. Cool. Be sure to uh, give it a thumbs up, favorite it, sub to it. Tell me what you think in the comments. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I also got a... There you go. So I'll get all of your comments. Just tell me what your high score is in the comments. I'd love to know how how this game does if it's too hard too easy like I, that gives you know just tell me your high score to, uh, so i can get an idea with all the levels inside the sonic game why won't you build Hit in levels and also Sonic Death animation. What are you talking about? <laughs> Do a face reveal. Sure. I gotta reach a certain number of subscribers to do that. A lot of people though, like I, I, I already waited too long at this point though. So some people are just like, no, don't do a face reveal. I don't want to be disappointed. But anyway, you guys let me know what your high score is. I'm going to, uh... I'm gonna see what I can get right now, and let's see if you guys can beat it. I just want to beat my 6,663... So I gotta focus. Surprisingly though, I think this game is easier than the uh, Don't Get Wet game. Still not even close to my high score. Come on. Didn't even get 5,000 this time. All right. Well, uh, it, it almost could have been two streams. 
Because I went an hour and a half over. Yeah. Yeah, I, I should have just done it in two streams. Whatever. I had a lot of fun. Hope you guys had fun uh, watching this too. YouTube music, don't fail me now, Durf Thoughts. I know, right? It's almost time for you to just uh, to just be like, you've been listening to music for too long. I'm just going to turn it off now. But anyways, thank you guys for chilling out with me this Sunday afternoon. Hopefully you guys enjoy the uh, arcade game. Hopefully you guys enjoy the stream. If you did, hit that like button. If you're not subscribed already... What, what, what are you doing here? Subscribe. If you actually want me to do a face reveal, then uh, I'm going to do a face reveal when I hit 100k subs. So if you want... Is this not on a lift? Why are you in the hill if you're not on a lift? What is going on here? You just sink in the hill? Oh, it's because I took it off the lift while it was like already in the hill. But anyway, that's going to be it for today. I'll see you guys tomorrow for Multiplayer Monday. Have a good one, folks.